So how do we fracture using less fresh water? This question is critical to our industry. One might ask the question, why do we need so much water to begin with? And the answer is because of the central defect in fracturing as we know it. Sand is heavy and difficult to transport. So this is the defect that requires the large volumes of water pumped at high rate and high pressure using complicated chemistry to generate viscosity to place properly. And even then, we might not be doing such a great job. So what are we looking at? This is a flow loop and it's designed to illustrate the easy transportability of ultralightweight propent and the formation of a partial monolayer. So the ultralightweight is a 1630 size. It's the clear spherical bead, very uniform inside that we can see moving quickly. Down below is a more conventional propent, 2.7 specific gravity, 40, 80 mesh. And the liquid is tap water with just enough salt added to make the ultra lightweight propent neutrally buoyant at 1.05 specific gravity. When we stop it, we see a partial monolayer. So half of a full layer of beads providing high conductivity through the spaces between the beads. With the conventional sand frack, we use a lot of sand and a lot of water. The water's probably got to be fresh water so that the chemistry works. We use a lot of pressure and horsepower to keep up the rate, to keep the product in suspension. Because of this high rate, the frack probably grows vertically more than we want or desire, might break out of its own, might increase water cut, and we've got to handle that at surface. We can see here the sand moving along the bottom. I think that's what happens in a frack. The sand sinks and dunes, maybe below target where it's not doing us any good. So because of these transport issues, the prop frack length might just be half of the fractured length, and the effective frack length may be half of that again, of the prop length, because of chemistry and other damage issues. With ultralightweight prop and fracturing, in contrast, the prop is the same density as the fluid. It goes wherever there's any fluid flow and enough width. Prop it goes right to the end of the frack, stays vertically suspended for more fractured area. In this greater propped area per unit of water used is the way that we can reduce water use greatly and use produced water. So if that produced water is salty, that's good. It's closer to the density of our propping at 1.05. The only chemistry we need would be that to get with. We can pump it at low rate, low pressure. We can provide what you might call a laser frack or longer fracks with less height. The idea is to stay in the pay and out of the water. So what is the impact of ultra lightweight propane? We use typically half of the fresh water, or half of the water and fresh water is not necessary. We use much less chemistry, one tenth of the propane, use a lot less horsepower and equipment, less wear and tear and abrasion of that equipment, less truck trips, less road damage, easier logistics, lower carbon footprint, less space on lease. We provide more conductive fracks in zone with longer and more vertical propped area lower water cut for less water to handle at surface. In conclusion, more for less. So we can move the sand. I mean, we can increase the velocity to the point that right near well bore, this material is moving. But when we move away from the well bore, it starts to drop out of suspension pretty quickly. And when you shut the frack in, nothing's going anywhere, except if the frack does happen to extend itself, the ultra lightweight problem will go wherever the fluid goes. So this is the way that we believe that we can create much more effective fractures using much less resource and in particular water. Thank you. Bye.